Hello, I, uh, I'm Harsh Manda. Uh, I love writing. Uh, I write uh, extensively, uh, but that's not uh, everything that I do. Uh, I I work around my my passionate work is around people of disadvantage, uh, of different kinds. Uh, but I also write and teach uh, and speak on is issues of this kind. Um, Something quirky, my, I was trying to look back on my childhood in boarding school uh, and the nickname I had uh, was of an animal called Salamander, which is actually Salamander. So that was something that I could remember. Actually, Ash in the Belly deals with, uh, um, really at the center of, of unequal India uh, in many ways. Uh, India's failure to feed all its people uh, that every second child in India continues to be malnourished in a country where we have uh, uh, our warehouses overflowing with grain uh, it, it is symbolic and also the result of an extreme comfort level that we have with inequality uh, and I think that, that that's really uh, a lot of what my book is about uh, it's about how people who you know we know statistically that about 230 million people sleep hungry every night in India. But it tends to be uh, just a statistic uh, for us. Uh, and people debate, is it 230 million, is it 200 million, etc. But what does it mean to be uh, living with, in a situation where you can't feed your child uh, today, you can't feed your child tomorrow, you can't feed, feed your child, where five days, ten days a month of hunger is something that is routine in your life. And, and, and so I think that, that that's something that in, in my book I've tried to humanize uh, to constantly. So, so the book uh, is really uh, interspersed with stories in italics, real people's lives who, who, who live and struggle with hunger. And then an analysis of, of where we have gone wrong. Uh, and. Uh, the structural inequalities of our society. Because countries uh, much poorer than us, Sub-Saharan Africa, Bangladesh in our neighborhood, have been able to turn around uh, India's, uh, turn around uh, the level and percentage of people who sleep hungry in, in those countries and are malnourished. India's, you know, singularly been unable to do so, even with, uh, you know, the, 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 the really uh, high levels of economic growth. And I think it's that paradox that I've tried to, to, to question in Ash in the Belly. The new book that I'm working on is, is, is talking about this more. I, I think that we have an enormous cultural comfort level with inequality. There's inequality with indifference, without outrage. Uh, and, and I think that you know, much of my life's work so far has, has focused on state policy what governments must do and, and, and I continue to, uh, to be wedded to that. But I think that, you know, as I'm growing older, uh, I'm recognizing more and more that, that we have an enormous, we've developed in our country an enormous tolerance for suffering around us. Uh, you know, Noam Chomsky had come to India recently and uh, he, he was saying that, you know, uh, uh, he's never seen a country, you know, just driving through the streets in Delhi where poverty uh, in its really raw form is so manifest and in the face. But he says that, that he's also never seen a middle class which has developed so much of a capacity to, to look and, and turn their faces away uh, without a sense of, 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 of outrage. And, uh, and I think that, you know, I, there are many things that, that we need to do, but I think we need to reclaim uh, also the idea of public compassion, egalitarian public compassion uh, uh, among, I mean, I think that thinking through what policies need to change, uh, political battles for justice, but also a framework of public compassion uh, is, is where I am increasingly feeling we need to move towards. That what I, what I'm, I try to do is to talk about uh, consistently about this other India, but not as objects of of pity, but of objects of people who are struggling with dignity uh, against very difficult odds. 
So, uh, so I, I value the public space that I have to talk about uh, uh, this other India and my, uh, my privileged engagement with people. You know, my work is largely with survivors of extreme communal violence, people who live with hunger, uh, homeless people, uh, people who su suffer caste discrimination and so on. Uh, and it is, uh, it is in, in the process of that engagement that I encounter people uh, who firstly are people, they're not categories. Uh, and secondly, they're people who are living really difficult lives uh, with, with dignity, uh, with, uh, 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 with grace. Uh, and it's something that middle class India, young people like you are not even being exposed to any longer. Uh, we, you know, we, we, you know, we are now living in islands, which are. Uh, Arundhati Roy somewhere has said that the only successful secession movement in this country has been of the middle class. They've seceded from the rest of India. They're living in some stratospheric in their gated colonies, in, in the places we go. So, in my writing, in a quiet uh, sort of uh, but very purposive kind of way, I'm trying to visibilize that other India with respect and dignity and empathy. Uh, that's the that's the aspiration. Uh, it's very imperfectly achieved, but that's really what I try to do. Books I write. I've done about 14 books now. Um, I, I like to pull myself away uh, every few months and live completely by myself, and 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 then write, you know, five, ten thousand words a day, uh, and, and and get get a whole set of perceptions out of my system. Twitter. I I, I have actually uh, so far. Uh, um, chosen not to join, uh, partly because I find this very, uh, very short communication something that uh, uh, that simplifies the world. I think is layered, uh, is nuanced, uh, and I, I, uh, perhaps I'm unequal uh, to this uh, to this uh, continuous communication uh, in, in in short uh, sort of uh, clever lines. Uh, since I have my, my about, I write five columns a month. I think that's that's good enough to communicate with the world. I, I do it with with space and thought. So I've stayed away from Twitter. Uh, I don't know how long that resolve. I mean, many friends have said that's a space you need to get into. Uh, but I, I I think that uh, uh, it's you know it, I find it strangely uh, intrusive and non-reflective uh, uh, in, in the way that it that it works. And I prefer. Uh, gentler, more contemplative spaces of communication.